ultimate wake-up call. A quote by Libby McNamara, permaculture designer, writer and teacher. The words emergency and emergence have the same Latin root, emerge, meaning to arise out of. So perhaps the emergencies we face will give rise to opportunities for emergence. My primary aim in writing this book was to offer an understanding of why we have each and every one of our most challenging emotions why they are healthy and how we can use them as an asset rather than a disability. Let me state very clearly, there is nothing healthy about despair. And yet in spite of this, despair is an emotion of profound value to us. Its value is in the message that it brings. Put simply, if you find yourself in a state of despair, then something is extremely wrong. From an emotional point of view, despair is about the biggest wake-up call that we'll ever get. We need to listen. I would ask anyone who finds themselves experiencing the depths of this powerful state of emotion to give themselves their full attention. Attention with compassion and a desire for inquiry without any form of judgment, criticism or blame. When we experience despair, we need to listen and we need to ask why. Despair is a state of being that results from a kind of emotional meltdown. Its powerful and debilitating effects usually come as a result of an inability to find any kind of satisfactory response to emotionally challenging circumstances. Unable to either process our experiences successfully or to navigate through or move beyond and away from the difficulties that we're facing, we experience a profound sense of helplessness, pointlessness and futility. Sometimes this can be triggered by a one-off event in which we feel or indeed are unable to see a way forwards. But more often, despair stems from a gradual build-up, an underlying sense of emotional helplessness that develops over time. This can be in response to a series of events and circumstances, but also sometimes from an ongoing lack of being related and responded to in a way that enables us to feel respected and empowered as a unique and valuable individual. When we find ourselves continually blocked by either events or people, this establishes an environment of can't do and impossibility. And this erodes our internal sense of entitlement to exert personal choice and to implement change. Ongoing and pervasive stuckness in any area of our lives perpetuates low self-esteem, sabotages our confidence and stifles our creative capacity to find and to establish hope as a foundational mindset. This in turn then undermines our core belief and our trust that regardless of present circumstances, things can and will change for the better. For some of us, despair has its roots in childhood when we were indeed helpless. If for whatever reason, the adults responsible for our care were unable to give us the consistency and the reliability that we needed to develop a core sense of trust. We will simply lack a solid foundation of emotional durability at times of duress, and this can leave us with a predisposition to experience despair in circumstances that other people may find less emotionally challenging. This doesn't necessarily mean that our parents were bad people, setting out to limit our horizons and our possibilities. It simply means that they were not aware of the implications of their actions. Indeed, sometimes parents can inadvertently do all the wrong things for all the right reasons. If this is the case, then as adults in charge of our own life choices, 
the more that we develop our self-awareness and our ability to listen to and understand our emotions, the greater our opportunity to take charge of our emotional health and address any deeper insecurities that may still be surfacing within our present time. Helplessness is an inherent and a natural part of any normal childhood. As children, we are reliant upon the adults in our world to provide us with an adequate degree of protection and safety. For those of us who were fortunate enough to have been parented reasonably well, this will be something that we grew up being thankfully unaware of. However, sadly, there are situations when adults do treat children extremely badly. Any form of abuse that violates the natural state of helplessness inherent in every child will create some challenging issues associated with trust. This is completely understandable. If your trust has in any way been violated, there would be something seriously wrong if you'd remained unaffected. The key to recovery and to moving forwards is what you as an adult choose to do about it now. Physical scars will heal relatively quickly, but the emotional ones remain unseen and therefore often unattended to. When I meet anyone who is struggling with despair, I immediately wish to look more deeply. I am curious about their relationships and the way that they relate not only with others, but more importantly, with themselves. When we begin to look below the surface with gentle interest and inquiry, we often find that beneath the despair, this person has little or no trust, not only in others and in the world in general, but also in themselves. And this lack of trust creates an internal disconnect from hope. There is a direct relationship between trust and our ability to hold hope in challenging circumstances. Just as powerlessness and empowerment sit at opposite ends of a spectrum, despair and hope sit at opposite ends of the same line. Hope is a vital component in our capacity for imaginative creative thought and therefore a vital component in our ability to recover and to move beyond a state of despair. When we are connected to hope, we are open to possibility. When we see life through the lens of hope, we recognise that even if we cannot see an immediate answer to a problem, we can trust that somewhere or somehow an answer will be forthcoming and that a solution or a way forwards will be found. Regardless of our circumstances, we have a fundamental trust and a belief that life can and will change for the better. By contrast, when we're lacking in trust, our perceptions and our expectations will be coloured by an underlying and pervasive sense of unease and anxiety. A difficulty in trusting others and the world in general will ultimately reinforce a lack of trust in ourselves, undermining our sense of entitlement to make healthy choices, as well as our ability to successfully see those choices through. This lack of trust creates an internal experience of ourselves that is shrouded in self-doubt, lowering self-belief and eroding self-esteem. Hand in hand with hope, the building of healthy self-esteem is another vital component in our ability to move beyond a state of despair. In fact, if we approach despair from a position of prevention rather than cure, our biggest asset is to build a healthy and solid sense of self-esteem. Healthy self-esteem underpins our emotional resilience which combined with an ability to listen to our individual emotional states and therefore to respond appropriately, supports us in navigating the constant changes and the adaptability to circumstance that life demands of us. 
Emotional resilience in adulthood doesn't come from having a perfect and happy existence with no ups and downs in life. Our emotional durability and resilience in the face of human life challenges stems from a core of healthy self-esteem built upon a foundation of trust. So how do we build self-esteem and how do we maintain it? The key to this lies in respectful, responsive relationship. Both trust and self-esteem are primarily built through our experience of ongoing respectful recognition and validation within relationship. We are first and foremost relational beings. We learn to relate through being related to and the consistency and the reliability of our primary relationships builds within us a core foundation of trust. As children, we are dependent upon the adults around us to respectfully acknowledge and validate us in ways that support and teach us to navigate our lives with a reasonable degree of confidence and durability. This includes validation and management of the full range of emotions that we experience in the face of our everyday developmental life challenges. For example, fear, anxiety, frustration, disappointment, sadness and anger. Our emotional durability comes from experiencing the full range of our emotions in ways that fuel and enhance our growth and our development. We need to be able to successfully navigate the stepping stones of natural developmental growth without experiencing emotional overload and overwhelm. This experience of knowing that we'll be okay, even when we don't feel okay right now, creates an internal sense of stability with an underlying innate sense of trust. And this in turn colours our perceptions and our attitudes towards any problems or challenges that we may later face. When problem solving becomes a process of healthy evaluation rather than a black and white success or failure scenario, we are free to learn and to grow from our mistakes without being left with underlying feelings of inadequacy and a fear of trying something again. In a nutshell, we need to be able to make mistakes safely, without fear, without blame and without judgment. If we use the analogy of a small toddler learning to walk, we need to be able to have a go, fall over and get back up again and know that we're okay. In the real experience of our everyday lives, in whatever we are doing, regardless of the outcome, it is healthy to be able to learn from the experience and to feel good about the fact that we even tried. We also need to feel empowered, enabled and entitled to have another go or to try a different tack, or if needed, to choose not to do it again. This is how we learn about healthy decision making and healthy choice. When this process goes well, we learn to trust both ourselves and others with an underlying durability in our capacity to navigate life with confidence, regardless of circumstances and regardless of the outcome. If you know that your self-esteem is genuinely low and you are struggling with despair, then I wish to invite you to make a firm commitment to listen to yourself. The substance of healthy self-esteem is built through the experience of respectful responsiveness. If you are experiencing despair, this is a wake-up call that is requesting your attention. If you are in an unhealthy and unhelpful situation, it is high time you listen to this and you give yourself absolute permission to do whatever is needed to move yourself forwards into an alternative state of mind and an alternative state of feeling. This may mean finding the courage to reach out and speak to someone. Another contributor to despair is isolation. If we are isolated or alone, 
a lack of connection and relatedness with others will both compound and magnify our despair. When we develop an appropriate level of responsiveness to any underlying emotional wounds that we may be carrying, including giving ourselves permission to seek help and support where needed, then finding emotional resolution then becomes possible. I recommend building a personal package of emotional self-care, a kind of care package that will in itself create a foundation of ongoing emotional and mental well-being. Where needed, it will also serve to underpin any process of recovery and resolution from any deep-seated emotional scars. To recover from despair, we will need to re-establish an inner sense of personal safety and from that position, an awareness of any choices that are available to us. To reconnect with hope, we will need to know that change is possible. And to create any form of change, we first need to listen and to validate the fact that there is a problem. When we become witness to ourselves with kindness and respect, we can gradually build enough self-worth to emerge from a state of emotional crisis to a space of inner courage where we can re-engage with hope and embrace an empowered state of living with an awareness of both choice and possibility. As adults, we can choose to make this commitment to ourselves. My invitation for today. Today, I wish to invite you to create a personal package of self-care that will maintain and increase a healthy state of self-worth and self-esteem.